Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the third video of our crash course on how to succeed in modern motion design and accelerate your career in animation. If you haven't watched the first two classes, I would recommend you to go back and watch them before you jump onto this one to get the most out of this crash course. In this class, we'll talk about one important animation principle that will instantly make your animation professional and add life and energy to whatever you animate going forward. Anticipation and overshoot. So what is anticipation and overshoot? It's actually quite easy to understand. Let's use this uh, logo as an example. First, what I want to do is I want this leaf to pop up from a probably like 20% of the size and then pop up to 100% or maybe 50%. So let's say, let me turn off this uh, action grid. So let's say if I have this leaf here and then at zero second, I want to go from 50% to maybe after 20 frames to 100%. So that's my motion there. And then let's go to the graph editor, make it bigger. So first of all, let's talk about anticipation. Anticipation is just moving to the opposite direction of where the object is going to move and anticipate, which means in this case, if I want to make this leaf bigger, I want to add a keyframe maybe around the third frame, just hold on command and then mouse left click add a keyframe to anticipate go to the opposite direction which is being smaller to anticipate it's going to be bigger so which means at zero second it's going to be around 50 percent and then it shrinks first before it goes bigger let me select three keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease this is my anticipation keyframe and for overshoot Overshoot means that before the object settle in position, it goes over the final state. In this case right now, I have 100%. Before it settles into 100%, I'm gonna add a keyframe here. Hold on command and then left click. Drag this keyframe up. So the object actually goes over 100% to maybe 100, 105% and then settles back in place. You can see right now in this case, I have both my anticipation keyframe and then the overshoot keyframe. This is the overshoot. Let me drag these handles, make the motion more exaggerated, and we'll see what happens, what it looks like. Let's preview. You can see the leaf actually shrinks before it moves up, getting bigger, and then it becomes too big before it settles into position which makes this animation super smooth. Also give a bit character to this leaf. Right now, the things I found is that the animation itself is too slow, which makes the anticipation and overshoot not so exaggerated, it's hard to see. So what I wanna do is exaggerate this a bit more so that just for demonstration purposes, select all the keyframes, hold down option, drag the last keyframes, move it forward, give it less time and then try to make this overshoot to go over even more and then anticipate even more. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's better, easier to see. If I were to add more anticipation to this animation, if I have a much bigger move, let's say if I have this leave maybe getting larger and larger to let's say 200% right around here. I can add more keyframes to make this overshoot even smoother. This is the overshoot and then I got six frames for the first keyframes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four. Let's go for four frames, add a keyframe, and then go for two frames, add a keyframe. And then select all of them, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now, what I can do is I can drag this one down a little bit. Give it a overshoot and also oscillation move. 
make sure the energy is dying, decaying, so each curve is becoming smaller and smaller, closer to this final percentage point. If I have a curve like this, let's see what happens to the animation. You can see it um, actually bounces a bit. So that's how, although it's not a ball bounce, but it actually bounces a bit. That's how you create a bounce animation to the object. If I were to make it more exaggerated, I can make the bounce even more dramatic, the spring even more dramatic. Just drag these up. Now let's preview. Now you can see we got something that has much more energy to the previous one. This one's more springy. So that's how you create a anticipation, which is the first keyframe over here to anticipate the motion. And then we have these keyframes here for the overshoot. And finally, it got to the final position, which is the last keyframe here. In animation, we call this anticipation. And now that you're aware of it, you will see it everywhere. Every cartoon you have ever watched uses this technique extensively. These really help to make your animation feel like there are some physical rules that it follows. Many of the principles you'll learn if you start to do animation are there to help you make your movement feel more natural. Human beings are used to seeing things move in real life. And when we see animation, it tends to just feel a little bit better when we see them follow a certain physical rules. Now we can compare these two animations here. The first one is animated without the concept concept of anticipation and overshoot. And the second one has applied this principle. You can tell that the second one looks much more alive and it's got much more character to it. That's one of the differences between an average animation and a professional animation. Think about if you applied this one simple principle to everything you animate going forward, how would your animation be? It will be instantly better and you will be able to make anything come to life just with one simple principle. That's what the 80% of people are missing out on as we talked about in the first video of the series. If you're on your way to become a professional animator and want to choose motion design as your career, you gotta learn these concepts and principles to give yourself a better chance of winning high paying jobs and big budget clients. These are the easiest and most effective way to push yourself into the top 20% of the industry and become a professional in the shortest time possible to avoid wasting years of learning from online tutorials, figuring things out yourself. All right, that's it with this lesson. Hope you understand this one secret behind those great animation now. In the next video, I'll teach you another animation principle, which is called follow through. It's a powerful one as well. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of this great content. Happy animating.